When Sue asked me to speak about building a better community, I started to think back about, in our lives and before, people who did build a better community. Certainly people who created things, who came up with solutions to things, were all people who made the human race a better community. When I started to think about people who overcame, who, who made these contributions to our community, all of them had something in common, and that is they all had to overcome obstacles. It's funny that Sue played the, um, this last TED talk right before me because the person was blind, and the one person who I thought of first was Helen Keller. Here was a person who had multiple obstacles to overcome. And yet, through her and through her teacher, they came up with forms of communications that had never been thought of before. She really used her abilities to overcome all of her disabilities. And in researching Helen Keller, an inspirational quote that is attributed to her is, the highest result of education is tolerance. So I'd like to take this opportunity to educate you on how tolerance can help us build a better community. And just what is tolerance? One of the definitions that I found of tolerance is it's, it's being patient, understanding, and accepting of anything that is different. I'm sure Helen Keller was labeled as being different. Other people who I started thinking about who were probably labor, labeled different was Albert Einstein. Albert was labeled as dull and dyslectic. And I bet if today's psychotherapists and psychiatrists were to label him, they would probably say he's on the autism spectrum or even of having schizophrenia. He didn't speak until he was four years old. His parents had him tested because they were worried. He had a lifelong weakness in language skills. But despite that deficiency, he used his ability in understanding science to look at physics in ways that no one ever had before and discovered the theory of relativity. Another one of famous people who I look at as an inspiration is John Forbes Nash, Jr. He won the Nobel Mobile Prize for Economics and Science in 1994. He was a mathematician whose fundamental contributions to theory, geometry, and equations are found in complex systems of our everyday lives. All this was achieved despite the fact that in 1959, he began showing clear signs of mental illness, spending several years at psychiatric hospitals being treated for paranoid schizophrenia. His struggles with his illness and recovery became the basis for a biography, A Beautiful Mind, which also became a movie. I recommend, if you can, to watch it. It's a story of struggles of abilities to rise over the disabilities. So how can we use tolerance to build our community? First, there has to be awareness of obstacles. There are many awareness days and months that we celebrate, and October happens to be the National Disability Employment Awareness Month. This is a national campaign dating back to 1945, when Congress enacted a law declaring the first week of October national employ the physically handicapped weak. Prior to 1945, employers were unaware of obstacles in their workplaces. Accommodations were few and far in between. In 1962, the word physically was removed to acknowledge the employment needs and contributions of individuals with all types of disabilities. In 1988, Congress expanded the week to include the entire month of October and changed it to the name that we celebrate today, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And the theme for this year is inclusion drives innovation. What kind of changes did we see as a result of these laws? 
It revolutionized building codes and transformed engineering of everyday items. I can remember growing up in my home and in the buildings and the stores that we'd go to. Everyone had round doorknobs. They were made of glass. They were made of wood. I can remember coming home from a shopping trip with my mother, withholding grocery bags. She'd be fumbling for her key. We'd put it in the door. But that round knob, our hands were full. We just couldn't turn that knob. And opening round knobs is not just difficult for people with grocery bags in their hands. It's difficult for people with a physical disability, and it might even be difficult for elderly. So out of the awareness of brown doorknobs and the difficulty it could be, the door lever was created. You know, you just hit it with your elbow. There's an ease of opening. You can have grocery bags in your hand and still open that door. So this innovation of the door lever not only gained accessibility for certain groups, I have them in my own house. It's easier for me, too. So everyone can benefit from innovations. The name change in the law in 1962 was also very significant. So while physical obstacles were being identified and solutions were being created, including braille signs, ramps, door levers, how were other obstacles that are not as apparent as physical ones being identified? People who have a mental health diagnosis or an intellectual and developmentally diagnosis, their obstacles aren't as transparent. How does the community include their special needs in employment? Historically, people with an intellectually or developmentally disability didn't work in the community, but rather they went to a sheltered workshop. There they would do assembling and packaging, getting piece rate pay, and the facilities were really segregated from the community. For a day-to-day -day workforce, they never really came in contact with someone who didn't have a disability. Nancy Thaler is our current Deputy Secretary of the Pennsylvania Office of Developmental Programs. She says, people have proven over and over again that those with disabilities can be more involved and integrated. The bar gets raised as to what integration is. People meet expectations and exceed them over and over again. We can all witness how the National Disability Employment Awareness theme for this year, inclusion drives innovation. It's happening right here at the Eastern Monroe Public Library. 15 years ago, the library had discussions about expanding the footprint of the building. The board had talked about a coffee shop to the expansion. Fitzmaurice had su submitted a proposal to run the coffee shop and to hire people with disabilities to run it. That expansion didn't happen. But fast forward to last year, this time the library had plans to renovate and repurpose the current space, which would include a coffee shop. The original proposal was dusted off and a partnership between the library and Fitzmaurice was created. The library cafe, as we have named the coffee shop, will be an integrated employment setting for people with and without disabilities. We'll be serving hot and cold drinks and snacks. We held a job fair about two weeks ago. The excitement of individuals who came and applied was electric. For many, this will be their first integrated job. Many applicants spoke of what this job would mean to them. A chance to serve coffee to the people, a chance to meet and talk to customers, have meaningful work, and get paid to be valued, just like many non-disabled folks do every day. We'll be opening very soon. I hope that all of you will come in and get a coffee and a snack. And if it just takes a little longer for that person who's been waiting on you behind the counter to make your change, it, takes a, it may take a little longer than perhaps when you're at the grocery store. 
I'd like you to remember one word, and that word is tolerance. Here's your opportunity to be a part of inclusion in your community and witness how all of us can benefit from the abilities of others. Because to our cafe staff, it's more than just a cup of coffee. It's an opportunity to be a part of the community where diversity is accepted and appreciated. Thank you.